We learned yesterday that the first shipment of Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine is expected to arrive in Singapore around March. This after the Health Sciences Authority approved it for use here. As a condition for the interim authorization, Moderna is required to monitor the long-term efficacy of the vaccine to determine the duration of protection against COVID-19. Moderna is also required to continue following up on the safety of the vaccine for a longer period of time to determine its full safety profile. The Moderna vaccine is the second COVID-19 vaccine to be authorised for use by the HSA after the one by Pfizer-BioNTech. There are differences between the vaccines from Moderna and Pfizer, like efficacy, the period between the first and second dose, as well as the minimum age of who can get each vaccine. Right, well, here to share more is Professor Ui Eng Yong. He's the Deputy Director of Duke NUS Medical School's Emerging Infectious Diseases Program. Welcome back, Professor. So, as Jan mentioned, there are differences between Moderna's and Pfizer's vaccines, but how significant are these differences actually in terms of what the vaccine is supposed to do? Yeah, no, uh, thanks for having me again. Um, I think for, for the person receiving the vaccine, I mean, uh, in, in, in Singapore, these differences are very minor and, and effectively, the, we can always think of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine as being very similar. They are similar in terms of the efficacy. I mean, one is 94%, the other one is 95%. Uh, in terms of the, the the average, but if you look at the the uh, spread of the data, then there's a lot of overlap. What it means is that there's not much difference between these vaccines. The the side effect profile is also very similar. Um, you know, injection site pain, soreness, uh, maybe a bit of tiredness, uh, headache, and some people may get fever. So it's a very common side effects of um, uh, that, we've, we, that we would encounter with any other vaccine anyway, and, and certainly very similar between the Pfizer and Moderna. Um, so from, from the uh, 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 Singapore public's uh, point of view, uh, we, should, we can think of this as uh, no, no difference, uh, no, no significant difference between these two vaccines. There will be some who will compare both vaccines uh, when Moderna's shot becomes available. Now, given that we can't choose which vaccine is administered, Prof, what's your advice for those concerned about which vaccine they'll get? Yeah, I think my, my advice would be don't worry about which, uh, which uh, uh, vaccine you're getting, whether it's from Pfizer or Moderna. In terms of the protection, in terms of the um, side effects and all that, yeah, pretty much... I mean, as, as you pointed out, one is just uh, three weeks apart. The other one is four weeks apart. It was just how the, the clinical trial was done. It was not like these were optimized, that one works better, uh, you know, in a three-week interval and versus a four-week interval. The, the, the clinical trials were, you know, we, the, the companies, like, like many others, tried to move it as fast as possible. So it doesn't mean that this uh, three weeks is better than four weeks or four weeks better than three weeks. There's, there's nothing in it. So in terms of the way we think about it, it, it should be the same. Uh, in terms of who can receive the vaccine and who cannot, it's probably going to be very similar because both of these vaccines are also RNA vaccine. Um, mm -hmm. They are pitched in lipid nanoparticle. So in terms of um, you know the likely side effects, the likely uh, allergic reactions and all that is probably... And, uh, and therefore, who can get and who cannot get, mm. pretty much going to be the same. Uh, so, uh, you know, nothing separates. There's very little that separates these vaccines. Right. Well, Prof, I don't know whether this is a related question, but back in November, Health Minister Gan Kim Yong, he said that some vaccines may be effective for different segments of the population. So when both vaccines are available, how will our vaccination rollout change, you think? For example, will Moderna's vaccine be reserved for certain groups and Pfizer's for other groups? Uh, I don't think so, because in terms of, you know, um, the, the kind of vaccines that they are, so both RNA vaccine and how they are packaged, is, they are very similar. Now, uh, from a scientific point of view, for people like me, then yes, you know, it'll be interesting to ask what are some of the nuances in the in these vaccines that could have um, you know, help us understand uh, RNA vaccines better and perhaps build better vaccines for the future. But that that's for you know nerds like me, I guess. You know, for, for the general public, there's really nothing uh, in it. I think what Minister Gan may be referring to also is that there are a lot of other vaccines in the pipeline, right? From 
uh, AstraZeneca, from Johnson & Johnson, from Novavax. Uh, so these uh, vaccines are now come in different um, uh, platforms. So we're made from uh, using different platforms, right? Um, so AstraZeneca is, uh, and, and Johnson & Johnson, they both use adenovirus to carry the, the spike gene. Novavax is just a spike protein. And so because of the differences in how these vaccines are made, and therefore now we perhaps can think of, okay, those who are allergic to the RNA vaccines or components of the RNA vaccine, then perhaps we can you know, assign them to receive uh, these other forms of vaccines. So, so but I think those will, will, will um, we can think about all that when those vaccines become licensed. Right now, we only have uh, either Pfizer or Moderna. I see. Right. You know, on the topic of um, myriad uh, vaccines, we know that your team at Duke NUS is also developing a COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, Prof, tell us, you know, what's the latest there? So we are right now in phase two clinical trial. Uh, that is, uh, uh, we are enrolling uh, uh, healthy volunteers as we speak. Uh, so the phase two trial is conducted both in Singapore as well as in the United States. Uh, it's, it's going very well and uh, we hope that you know, with the phase two data, we can then move towards a uh, phase three clinical trial, you know, around the second quarter to the middle of this year, uh, and then have, uh, you know, uh, efficacy data, um, you know, maybe around the third quarter, and hopefully we'll be able to have a licensed vaccine before the end of the year.